This morning we're going to learn how to rename a collection. So in the previous video on this playlist, if you go back and look, you will see that we created a collection called non-habs. And so what we want to do is we want to rename the collection non-habs to habits. So db.nonhabs.find dot pretty and this was just a, a copied collection from Habs but let's say that we wanted to rename this and we wanted to rename it to Habits so we're going to go ahead and execute that command so we have db dot non Habs dot rename collection and now we will specify our new name and you'll see that it returns OK so it indicates to us um, that everything is fine. Now let's go ahead and call this, and you'll notice there's nothing, right? Non-habs no longer exist. So we'll go back to non-habs, and we'll type in habits, and we will get our result back. So um, naming, renaming a collection, it can be very useful, especially in the early phases. It's kind of like renaming a table. Keep in mind, though, that the more, let's say, applications you have pointed to that table, uh, automatically you'll need to rename all of those references so I don't you know don't really suggest going around and renaming things all the time make sure that your naming convention from the beginning on your application is useful also just a uh, just a note in general if you have a structure for your naming convention um, this is as true as SQL Server as it is with MongoDB it allows a lot uh, easier automation for source control so keep that in mind if you specify you know whether something's a collection it's just like if you specify whether something's a table or a procedure it makes it easier to go through and interrogate code so just always keep those things in mind how are you naming um, your items it's one thing to do things in test or you name it anything it's another thing in actual production to make things a lot easier for yourself to identify things